Hey guys, Ted from Nerd Immersion here. Um, this is our review <laughs> of uh, Rhode Island Comic Con. It was filmed, or recorded rather, on the way home from the Comic Con, but it was dark, so rather than doing a video, we tested out this awesome new digital voice recorder that I got for doing the audio when we filmed videos and interviews and things at the convention. So we tested this out, so it's all audio. Uh, so for your listening pleasure, please enjoy, enjoy that with some videos of the convention floor and pictures that we took mixed in.
Alright, so there you have it. That was our review. Uh, there was a few things that we actually didn't touch on, which was what we actually got at the convention. And one of them actually ties into a different part that we didn't actually touch on. So, let's get that part out of the way. Random thing to have at a convention, exotic jerky. Like, when I say exotic, I mean exotic, as in exotic animals. So, Newport Jerky Company, alligator, Cajun flavored jerky. It's actually really, really good. Mako Shark Jerky. This stuff is disgusting. It smells like fish. It's actually really hard to keep it. I'm going to put it down, actually. <coughs> it smells like fish, and it kind of tastes like chewy fish. So I would not recommend that. They also had Python Jerky, um, tons of other you know, typical things like beef jerky, yeah, venison jerky, that kind of stuff. But the gator and the python was the real rare stuff. So, um, that was something different. I haven't really seen it at a convention before. So we picked up two packages of that, and unfortunately the one's not good. Um, what else did I get at the convention? <laughs> uh, well, Sean and I both got these U.S. Army squirt bottle water bottles because the guys from the Army at the convention didn't want to bring them home, so they were just giving them out to whoever walked by. So, got a lot of free swag. We seem to get a lot of drinkware for free. Um, I, once again met one of my favorite artists, who you may uh, remember I mentioned on the Philly review, um, the lovely Miss Sarah Richards. Here is the uh, Rainbow Dash. What is this? This is the Micro Series number 2 featuring Rainbow Dash. This is an exclusive cover of hers. And I got her to sign it. You can see right there. It goes very well with my... This one? Yeah. This Rainbow Dash art that I got her to sign for me at Philly Comic Con as well. So that was pretty cool. Um, actually, I don't know if that review ever went up, but that's besides the point. Uh, I also picked up, this was a, a surprise find. I don't know if you can get that because of the weird reflection. You know what? Let's just take the case. Well, it's still got, so either way. This is D&D &D Attack Wing, which, if any of you are familiar with the game X-Wing, um, this is basically X-Wing, but set in a Dungeons & Dragons world, and rather than Starships, Millennium Falcon, X-Wings, you're using dragons. Uh, I haven't actually busted into the rules in this to see how it differs, but from the guys I spoke to at the convention, it's actually different because it has ground troops as well. So if you've purchased any of the... It's kind of unfortunate, because if you've actually purchased any of the D&D &D official minis, um, the Icons of the Realm set is the stuff that's out there now, the minis that they use in Attack Wing are the exact same minis. Um, yeah, it's WizKids Hero Clicks. Uh, so WizKids is the one that makes the uh, the official minis as well. So... Like, I noticed the stuff they had there, they had, like, the Sun Elf and the Frost Giant, and those are the exact same minis. So, the minis are the same, but as if you buy, I guess if you have other ones and you buy one, you then get the cards that give you all the information you need for that character to actually use them in Attack Wing, and then you'd be able to have multiples of that. So, for me, I have, like, the Frost Giant and a bunch of other minis from that series, I don't know what their attack power and all the stats of them are for this game, but if I buy one, I'll have multiples. Also, if you just... This was $50 for the starter set. Um, I think, if memory serves, each one of these dragons, if you were to try to get them sort of separately on eBay or from a toy collector site or a mini site, this is a gold gold dragon? Uh, bronze brass dragon. But either way... Um, these run, could run you anywhere from ten to twenty dollars a piece, and this was fifty dollars. You get three dragons. This is a it's a red, blue, and I, like I said, I guess a bronze dragon, and you get that all for fifty bucks plus a whole game that you can play. So one of uh, the better deals as far as minis go. Plus you know a two-player plus game that's awesome. Um, 
Sean obviously isn't here right now, but he picked up a sweet one of the, we mentioned the acrylic cut uh, night lights. We'll actually have an image pop up uh, on screen here for you. And when he bought one of those for his niece, um, I also picked up a shirt from T Turtle, um, but they are at pretty much every convention we go to. So you can check out tturtle.com for pretty awesome t-shirts. Um, they also do the cool thing where if they don't have the shirt you want at the convention, they will ship it to you for free. So you can just buy it there, give them their information, and they'll ship it to you. Um, and the only other thing that I really got from the convention wasn't actually anything I paid for. And it was just a really cool thing. So you guys may have seen it on the Facebook page. But right here. For those of you who don't know, or, or I don't think I'm dating myself with this, but you never know, uh, this is a Polaroid image. There was a random guy who recognized me as Captain N and said, Oh my god, Captain N, that's awesome, I need to take your picture. So he pulls out his phone, takes the picture, and I smile, do the pose, everything's fine. And I'm like, okay. And I'm about to walk away, and he goes, hang on, and let me get one for you. And he pulls out from like the strap on his side an old Polaroid camera, Sets it up, snaps the picture, and goes, here you go, and, you know, don't shake it, keep it out of the light, whatever. And then look at this, a black and white Polaroid picture of me in my costume. And he was doing that to, like, all these other cool people that had, like, 80s-style costumes to give them black and white 80s Polaroids. And my wife tells me it's actually not a bad picture of me. So, either way, just, you want to get people to really, really like you at a convention, and just, it's so different, just... If you have an old Polaroid camera and you can find the film, which I think ThinkGeek does have the film that you can buy for your old Polaroid cameras, I, I would recommend doing that. It's just a fun blast from the past, and you'll probably totally freak out all the young kids that don't know what a Polaroid camera is. Um, so yeah, that was basically it from the convention on, on our end as far as things we got. So once again, um, be on the lookout for the Drinking Quest review coming out soon. And uh, hopefully we'll s I'll see you, me personally, I'll see you at Super Mega Fest in Massachusetts in about three weeks from now. Um, it'll only be me there, but I hear it's a pretty social convention, good for networking. So come on out. I hope to see you. We'll take some selfies and I'll throw them up on the website. All right. Have a good one, guys.